Hello everyone, and here I am with another uh, Throwback Thursday review, and this is the rotation of which leads to a Star Wars set, and today we are reviewing Django Fett's Slave 1, which, from 2002. So on the front of the booklet, you see this border that they have used to, until 2004. You see the logos, and 8 through 12. And set number 7153, Django Fett, Slave 1. And it go into the asteroid field down to Geonosis. And on the back, how to win on the online. Or, I mean, the uh, ad for the website with the first version Yoda there. Ad for some of the early sets from the time, like Twin Pot Cloud Car, which was never redone until about. 2018 in the betrayal of Cloud City set and in some book. And then the first version, Republic Gunship, which they did about two other versions of by this point. And of course, some of the other ones that there were in the last steps. So, first of all, for the figures is the main incentive is the first version of Django Fett. But also one of the only times we've ever gotten Django Fett, who of which stayed exclusive for like nine years until 2013. And then once again in 2017, yeah, 2017, with the hyperdrive boost ring uh, interceptor set. But also in and of course, 2013 with the uh, Corporate Alliance tank droid set. So, as you see, it does have some purple arms and legs, kind of interesting for the character. But also, same with like the uh, Technic figure version of him that had a lot of purple to it, probably to match that. You know, there probably isn't a speck of purple on him in the movie, but that's for the helmet piece, just the same as the early Boba Fett ones, but just in silver and different prints to it. And unlike with that, in the course, it's one solid piece rather than two separate pieces. But also unlike the early Boba Fetts, is that you can swivel the head around and you got this printing. And just like modern minifigures, it doesn't have, it's not very you know, solid yellow as other regular heads and everything. So you kind of ought to look out once it's like that. But like as compared to this 2013-17 version of which, but also the one that was in one of the, or Christmas one that was in one of the advent calendars, like the helmet pieces, which do look kind of similar to that. And of course, it's two separate pieces. And of course, this older Jango Fett is supposed to be holding a couple of pistols, but they're stored in the Slave 1. And of course, this newer version uses some sand blue compared to the, instead of the purple, because after all, this usually has on sand blue. And of course, Similar chest detailing as the others, but, as, but this newer version does have an actual face print to it, much better than this version. And that is it with Django Fett. And on to the only other one is Young Boba Fett. And what makes him kind of memorable is that he and Yoda and the Ewoks at this time were the first to use short legs. And as you can kind of tell that, both the hair piece of which is what they also used on older Obi-Wan at this time, as well as, and then also with Anakin in the 2005 line. Over the no back torso print nor alternate face since it's an older figure. 
see impact of the paper. Like, if compared to one of the most later versions from like 2013 and 17, which was in like an app and calendar and all, but as you see, it's a more regular sand blue and, of course, dark blue arms, but unlike in similar hair pieces. Whereas this newer version does have an alternate facial expression, as the others do, as most do. But you know, it's a 10 year difference. It's ten year. Now, on to the set itself. Uh, the Slave 1. Jingle Fat Slave 1, actually. This is which a uh, pretty cool one. So now, this shaping of it, almost like the uh, 2006 Slave 1 set, where it's kind of like a direct copy from that. But whatever. It has the shaping all correct to that. It's, as you see, has some dark blue sloping and some like jagged slopes there. But also these pieces in sand green, of which kind of interesting and good for mocking. And but moving up for the wing area, of which built kind of a bit like the other versions, but as you see, you have the bonacle pohawk to uh, boot pieces probably acting as greebles. And also some of the older style paneling. Probably almost like the 2000 Slave 1. But this upper area, which does have a couple printed pieces, or printed slopes down there, but also some good shaping to it. Whereas this upper area, which does have some good markings over it, and like the other versions, a couple of turrets, but made of those pieces from classic space lines. And you can like open this slot and it does have an extra hair piece to put on Jenga effect. As the other version also. So, so with a lot of accessibility to this you can like open this up and then these are which to fold out and they're both little turrets to shoot at the Jedi interceptors and all. Which kind of similar to that of the later slave ones. But if open all of these out and then have a couple extra rockets and also probably its engine or something. Yeah. Let us take off this cockpit area and then have a whole ton of like printed slope pieces and a lot of those controller pieces that they used a lot back then. But then later on again, starting in 2012, and enough space to fit both of your figures onto it. But whereas, it's like behind each other rather than side to side in the movie. As for one of the main features is, if you look at the back of which, if you see this tan tile, when you pull on that, and it drops a few bombs. And of course, can like put it right back on like so. And to get it all back in again, Flip this open and put them in, and then close it up again. But the other of which is have this crate right here with some interesting pieces that are probably out of print by now, or not sure. Could they still be used? Not sure. Or if they are still used, tell in the comments. But these open door kind of pieces. Very interesting. Where it do have some reverse studs on it. You can attach things to them. Yeah. 
or maybe not. Just stick to on the tubing. So not as much clutch power from there. So it's kind of hard to access them. But if you notice what this uh, magnet piece from the train sets do, is that there's a magnet piece somewhere in there. And which also used on the 2002 gunship set. It's going to like lower it down on it and it picks it right up like so. so. Let me give a little brief comparison of both this and the most recent uh, 2019 Slave 1, which I also reviewed on my channel. So as you see, newer version, quite bigger and like this version which was probably like fifty dollars at its release and this was 120 at its release so, so of course it's much larger and also a couple of actual firing features which this new version old version doesn't but whereas there was a 2006 version of this slave one and it had a similar build to this version. Like it was kind of a direct copy of it. But at least they improved it with the 2010 version. Let's see. Also, perfect sloping in there as well. And yeah. Not much, but yeah. So now on to the final verdict. So overall, I think this is which a pretty cool set at, for 2002. And kind of puzzles me why they've never redone this version of the Slave 1, Django Fett Slave 1. When it's always Boba Fett's version that they keep on redoing. And of course, only time to ever have Django Fett until 2013. But at least, was quite memorable and all. But I hopefully sometime in the next couple of years, LEGO will redo this version. So if you're watching this LEGO, please redo this set. It would, but Django Fett's version. But it would be great for everyone. And if you still have this set from back in the day, well, I hope you had some good memories of it. And for those of you who haven't, well, good luck trying to find it. Well, good luck finding like, it. Like eBay Brinkley, whatever. And that's about it with this video, and thanks for watching.